Good morning. I am Pastor Bruce Rosengano. I am the lead pastor here at uh, New Hope Community Church in Northport. And uh, I'm excited to talk with you a little bit. I want to talk about our new sermon series, Marked, uh, the understanding of who we are as disciples. Marked as a disciple, the idea that we have Jesus' thumbprint on our life. So today I want to talk with you about this first message in the series. First message is all about a very personal call to become a seeker. Uh, when we think of uh, the calls to discipleship, often we just focus on one or two aspects of it. Many of us might remember things like, well, yeah, he called us to be a fisher of men. Oh, yeah, he called us to follow him. Those are the two most common. But actually, in the New Testament stories, there are numerous accounts where Jesus is talking and he's calling individuals out of the crowd. He's calling people to himself as disciples. He's calling them to do more. And over the next few weeks, we are going to explore what it means to be marked as one of his disciples. We begin this week with a very exciting message for me. It is the first one. It is the idea that all discipleship begins with a very personal call to become a seeker. I want to read. I have it on my screen. I'm going to look down. I want to read to you from uh, the Gospel of John. And I want to read for you in this Gospel, uh, starting in the first chapter in verse 35. And just listen and follow along as I read. It says this. The next day, John was there again with two disciples. And when he, John, saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples who were with him heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them and asked, what do you want? And they said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, you will see. And so they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. You see, this idea that all discipleship begins with a personal call to become a seeker, for some, that call to be a personal seeker, it begins with simply wanting more. In this story, two of John's disciples are following after uh, John, and John points out, look, there's the Lamb of God. There's uh, the one. He's over there, and he points him out. And the disciples, wow, they go and they follow. They leave John, and they seek Jesus, wondering what it means that he is the Lamb of God. And Jesus sees them, turns around, calls them out. What do you want? And you can see at this point that they're not sure what they want, but they, they do want more. They call him rabbi. They call him teacher. And they simply ask him, where are you staying? And he simply says, come and you will see. He invites them into this seeking posture. So they went where he's staying. They spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Now I want you to notice a couple of things that this personal call to become a seeker began with the testimony of another person. It was John the Baptist who said, look, there's the Lamb of God to two of his own disciples. And he kind of released them for more of what Jesus had to offer. They, without fully understanding, opt to leave John and follow Jesus. So it's based for some people on the testimony of another person pointing and saying, look, this is who Jesus is. This is what he's done in my life. It's also, for some individuals, it's going to be expressed as an expectant choice. They choose to follow Jesus, and they expect to be taught. They call him rabbi. They come expecting. Teach. Teach us. John pointed out there was more. They chose to seek it, and they expected it to happen. Each of us uh, has people in our lives already that uh, are, are poised to respond to the de declaration. Look, there's the Lamb of God. Look, there's Jesus. Look, this is who Jesus is and what he's done already. My question to you is, when's the last time you simply did that in another's presence? When's the last time you declared, look, this is Jesus, and he's the one who's changed my life forever. He's the one. So we're talking about the idea that all discipleship begins with a personal call to be a seeker. Well, for some, that uh, begins with a missional encounter. 
What do I mean by a missional encounter? Well, in the very next story that occurs in John chapter 1, a missional encounter occurs. And I want you to see it and understand it. Starting in verse 40, it says this, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and had followed Jesus. Okay, so one of the two individuals that were there when John said, this is the Lamb of God, and one of the two who went and followed, one of the two who made the choice, the expected choice to become a personal seeker, this individual is at the focus of this story. And we know now it's Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. It says this in verse 41. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, you'll be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. You see, for some people, they're journey of discipleship begins with a missional encounter, someone else intentionally bringing them to Jesus. That person has had first a real encounter that has led them to share that encounter with others. In this case, it's Andrew, and it literally says in scripture, the very first thing that he did was to do this missional encounter, go tell and bring someone else. He brought someone to Jesus. In my life, it was a man named Art Coulter. Art Coulter, who on Governor's Island uh, befriended me when I was really messed up, had no idea who Jesus was, was in massive amounts of trouble. Art Coulter, who slowly over a period of months brought me to Jesus. My question for each of us, who are we telling? Who are we seeking to bring to Jesus? Who are we in a deep enough relationship with that we can bring them to Jesus, that we have that type of influence, that type of opportunity? We can't say we're disciples unless we are seeking to tell and bring others into this relationship with Jesus. All discipleship begins with a personal seeking of more. For some, it simply begins with wanting more. For others, it's about a missional encounter that someone does in their life. But there's a third example. Again, these calling stories occur one, two, three in the first chapter of John. And there's a third calling story that's included in these early calling stories. Beginning in verse 43, there's a calling story that lets us understand that for some people, this decision, this start of discipleship by becoming a personal seeker, for some it begins with just a very simple invitation. Why don't you just come and see? Now it says this, verse 43, the next day Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. A Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we found the one that Moses wrote about in the law about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can any good thing come from there, Nathaniel asked? Come and see, said Philip. And when Jesus saw Nathaniel approaching, he said of him, truly, there's an Israelite in whom there's no deceit. How do you know me, Nathaniel asked. And Jesus answered, I saw you when you were under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You're the king of Israel. And Jesus said, you believe because I told you. I saw you under the fig tree. You're going to see greater things than that, he added. Truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and angels of God ascending and descending on the throne of man. This come and see invitation that Philip makes to Nathanael is dependent upon his first personal encounter with Jesus. Jesus had called Philip. Follow me. Philip responds. Philip discovers, wow, this is the one. This is the one that Moses wrote about. This is the one that was prophesied. This is the one. He goes, he tells Nathaniel. Nathaniel has doubts. Nathaniel is actually really negative. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip simply just says, look, Come and see for yourself. Now that's come and see 
is unique. It's founded in a group experience. An early group experience is talked about. It says this, Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Others in that group, others in that setting were responding. And when others were responding, the invitation to come and see was a very powerful one. Multiple people having encounters, having found the one, makes it easy to invite others to simply come and see. What are you doing to make sure that your experience here at New Hope Community Church is positive? It's, if it's uplifting enough that adherents feel good about simply inviting others to come and see what God's doing in our lives. Are you prepared to engage in the power of come and see? Then when other people are coming and they're excited about what God is doing, are you prepared and ready to simply invite others to come? If you're at church again with us soon, you'll notice that in the back we've prepared some really creative come and see invitations. Some come and see invitations that make it easy for us to just reach out to others, to use them as an opportunity. Then one of the things we want to do is we want to encourage people to kind of share. This last week, I got a chance to invite someone. This last week, I got a chance to give away one of my come and see invitations. We can't control who responds, but we want to encourage each other to be about the come and see work of the kingdom. I'm Bruce Resengata. I'm the lead pastor at the New Hope Community Church. We have a number of expressions. We have an English congregation that meets every Sunday morning at Nyang. We have a Hispanic congregation that meets uh, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, at 11 o'clock, there is uh, a Presbyterian congregation, the Word of Life, that meets in our midst on Tuesday nights. Uh, we have Celebrate Recovery, another congregation. Each of these filled with vibrant worship and people seeking. What does it mean? to be a disciple of Jesus. His thumbprint is upon our lives, and we want to discover everything that means, and we want to share it. We invite you to discover more about your relationship with Jesus with us at any one of our services. And we also invite you to invite others to simply come and see. Be blessed.